This is an intro. Don't need the intro. I don't need the intro. This is just the big... YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh, and welcome back to Coil Wars. That's right, guys, the votes are in. In case you missed the one minute quick promo that was put out to Instagram yesterday, the votes are in, and we do have our 10 coil builders. Today, we're going to take a more in depth look at the 10 winning entries and learn a little bit about some of our competitors. We're also going to talk about the first challenge that they're going to face, and we're going to have a little build demo for you a little while. First build we're going to take a look at today is from a builder who goes by Teddy Damps on Instagram. Teddy Damps' real name is Senol, S-E-N-O-L, I hope I'm saying that right. He's a 40-year-old from Germany, he works in a prison for young people. He's been vaping for five years and he's been building since September of 2015 and he mainly likes to build in braids and he also has some tutorials on YouTube under the name Teddy Damps. Man after my own heart, he has it mounted up in the Aeronaut. I fucking love the Aeronaut, man. I don't know if you've ever seen my video on the Aeronaut, Teddy, but I'm a big fan too. He's got a drip shot over here on his coil. It is a five loop flattened vertebrae coil made of 32 gauge wire, and it's staged against a 22 gauge wrap. Five wraps and a three and a half millimeter bit, and it ohms out at 0.14 ohms. Our next coil warrior goes by the name of Laricus88 on Instagram. He is a 28 year old living in the Scottish borders in the UK. He's been vaping since January 26th of 2015 and he's been building only a little bit over a year now. His winning build was a 12 ply 0.4 millimeter staple wrapped in 38 gauge N80 using pure atomist wire. He's also a member of the Build Faction Build Team on Instagram. Our next coil warrior goes by ndivine83vbc on Instagram. His name is Nick Devine and he's from Philadelphia. He's a 32-year-old carpenter contractor and he has a 10-year-old daughter. He's been vaping almost three years now. He started a couple months after getting clean from drugs. He's been dripping since three months, so he's been building almost as long as he's been vaping, he says. He got into the more intricate stuff almost two years ago now, and he's been on Instagram a little over a year. For him, building is an escape, and it gives him something constructed to do with his addictive personality. He's been clean three years, and smoke-free for two years. He would like to build in local shops, but now that's no longer possible with the new deeming regulations that have gone into effect, because anyone that's building coils would be considered a tobacco manufacturer. He loves music and movies, especially metal and horror, and he's pretty much just a family man who's good with his hands. <laughs> Nick describes his build as a stapled helix with Clapton rails that's been stripped naked. <laughs> Basically, he means the naked staple in between. It's actually a very, very difficult coil to master. He used 28 gauge and 40 gauge for the twisted Clapton by the looks of it and he used 6 times 0.4 ribbon wire for the naked staple. Our next coil warrior goes by Dark Dog Customs on Instagram. His name is Mike Bergram. He's 36 years old and he has a 2 year old daughter. He's owned an auto interior upholstery studio, Dark Dog Customs, for about 6 years, but he's been in that industry for near 20 years now. So crafting and building things, he says, is a big part of who he is. He got into vaping about 2.5 years ago but only started on the artistic side of building about 13 months ago, just over a year. He's an admin for a large coil building group, and until he had to shut down this week due to the regulations, he was a registered builder with Coils for Advocacy. Yeah, that was some sad, sad news in case you didn't hear. Coils for Advocacy, one of the big groups that helps collect money for CASA, helps collect money for a number of advocacy groups, in support of these lawsuits against the FDA and the deeming regulations was forced to close this week because they technically they'd be selling coils and that would make them a tobacco manufacturer which would make it just far too expensive for them to operate if they hadn't closed they'd be facing jail time fines totally understand that you guys at coils for advocacy had to shut the doors for now I always thought that was one of the cooler advocacy groups out there just in the way that they 
represented themselves in the way that what they did for the community. I'm, I'm sad to see it go too, guys. That's a real shame. It's a real blow. Dark Dog Customs entry was a, how he describes it, a variant of the Mad Max coil, which was created by In Circles 36. To make this build, he used 42 gauge N80, one piece of 0.4 Canthal ribbon wire, 24 gauge N80 for the core, and he paralleled that with some 26 N80. It ohms out at 0.38 ohms. Our next builder goes by Macy Vapes. Macy Vapes on Instagram is a man by the name of Matt Macy. He is in the UK, he's a father of four. He quit smoking 11 months ago and started building coils only 17 weeks ago. Wow. Macy's build was a 24 gauge fused Clapton fused with 34 gauge stainless steel and that was twisted together and then paralleled and then wrapped with 0.5 ribbon wire and then it was all staged against a single strand of 24 gauge Canthal. Stainless steel has a tendency to colorize when it's heated and that's how Macy got some of these really incredible rainbow assortment of colors on this build. It's absolutely beautiful the colors you got out of that one Macy. Crazy Vapes on Instagram is Danny Harrison. He is an army vet, now a journeyman lineman for the IBEW. He has a wife and two kids. He started vaping two years ago and building heavy back in May or June of this year. He sponsors the event Disabled Vapors Clouds UK by sending coils their way. Crazy Vapes build uses a total of eight core wires. Yeah, eight core wires. There are two aliens in here. Uh, the alien by itself is three strands of 28 gauge and then it's alien Clapton with 36 gauge. And then, He's got these staggered framed aliens. The frame consists of 26 gauge N80, two strands of that, and then it's staggered and fused with 36 gauge. And then there's an alien inside of that with three strands of 30 gauge, alien Clapton with 38 N80. That's a serious build, serious build, seriously low build. It's a .06 on the pre-fire. So it probably opened up a little bit more than that after that, but definitely guys, do not attempt these builds unless you have a thorough knowledge of battery safety. Raymo to you on Instagram is Ray Morris. He is an ex gray hat tech consultant. He was drafted by GE and has been working for them for the past few years. He's 27 years old, married with six children. He's had a number of hobbies over the years, ranging from RC sports, sports shooting, cars, welding, games and modding, program cracking, and now he's in the building. He started vaping just about three years full on, but dabbled in it since 2008. He's most well known on Vaping Underground, the forum Vaping Underground, uh, where he does written reviews, comparisons, and everything he's purchased, and build tutorials. There are 16 strands of .4 ribbon wire and 28 N80 frames, and it's all staggered and fused with 40 gauge N80. And two of those ribbon wire strands are actually corrugated. You see how they have that look to them? We haven't covered corrugated builds yet on this channel, but we will. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the winning entry from Bad MF Mike on Instagram. I guess Bad Motherfucking Mike. He has been vaping since November of 2015, building since January of 2016. He is the founder of Clouds on Wheels and co-founder of Disabled Vapors United. Clouds on Wheels being a vape competition for disabled vapors. He started building by watching YouTube videos by Squidude, Blue Eyed Goon, and Own Boy Josh. Me. <laughs> I never thought I'd be mentioned in the same breath as Squidude and Blue Eyed Goon. That's weird. Uh, he is a nuclear power plant operator at Waterford 3 in Louisiana. Prior to that, he served in the U.S. Navy on submarines as a machinist. He has a wife and child, and they're the reason that he quit smoking. He's 47 years old. Mike's build is an exo-alien, uh, built in the style I've shown on my channel with my exo-alien quote build. It looks to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it looks to be 13 wraps. If I had to guess, I would say that that is 24 gauge uh, alien, and it is stitched with... 24 gauge sticks to 30 maybe, something like that. I can't really tell. Anyway, and he has it mounted up in the Tsunami. Skits Apart goes by the name of Sasha. He is from Germany, and I'm just going to read his short bio because, it, well. Morning guys, my name is Sasha, AKA Skits Apart from Germany. 
Carry all since about March 2016. Ah, yes. My English is really bad, so if you cannot read anything, Uncle Google blame. Vape on. Vape save. <laughs> awesome. I don't have the specs on Schizopart's build, I don't believe, but essentially what it is, is it is a stovetop coil, sort of a staggered Stapleton in a stovetop configuration. It appears to be 20 gauge frames, 18 gauge or 20 gauge frames. I want to say it's 12 strands of, if I had to guess, I would say that was 0.8 ribbon. One of those frames happens to be clapped in with 30 gauge and 36 gauge clapped in be my guess, over one of the 18 gauge uh, frames. And it looks like all that's fused together with some 36 gauge as well. That's one heck of a stovetop coil. Two's CFTP is actually Two's. He turns 47 in October. He's been vaping since October 26th of 2015, building coils since November or December of 2015. He lives in Sweden and he's gone from smoking to vaping and enjoying coil building and he's never looking back. 2CFTP's build is a framed corrugated staple helix. 2 times 28 gauge wire twisted together makes up the two frames. And then there are 6 plies of 0.4 ribbon wire and 4 plies of corrugated 0.4 ribbon wire that's all sandwiched together here. And then it's all wrapped together with 38 gauge and 80. It ohms out at 0.1 ohms. So once again, congratulations to the 10 of you. You guys are past the qualifiers and you're in the competition. From here, every week we're gonna have a new challenge for you. And every week you're gonna fulfill that challenge and a guest judge is going to evaluate your entries. And from there, he's going to pick one winner for the week and one loser for the week. Single elimination challenges until only one builder is remaining and it's crowned the Coil Wars champion. So huge thanks once again to everyone involved. Congratulations to our winners, but huge thanks to everyone that took the time to go ahead and submit a build, put themselves out there. All the builds were incredible. By the time the voting was done, over the 48 entries in total, we kept the competition open until pretty much the last minute, and we ended up with 48 total competitors. Split up over those 48 entries, there were more than four thousand likes among them so thank you to everyone that came out and voted thank you to everyone that entered you guys are awesome and this competition wouldn't be what it is without you and that's coming from both me and Dwayne Dwayne is my partner with Coil Wars he's been with me every step of the way it's a team effort between me and him so Coil Wars truly is brought to you by own boy Josh and Dwayne Rambo. If you see him down in the comments on these videos, he's Mr. Reefer, give him a pat on the back because he's been with me since the inception of this idea. So what's next? Alien coils. The first leg of this competition is all about the alien coil. You're probably familiar with the alien coil already. The traditional alien coil has three cores and it is clapped in over with a sort of a wavy sort of wrap, an alien wrap. Everyone loves alien coils just because they produce some of the best flavor imaginable and they are just so friggin' cool to look at. I mean, but they're also a real challenge to make. They're one of the hardest coils out there to make if you ask me because getting the wire to fall just right so it creates this pattern and it doesn't back up on itself and it doesn't get screwed up anywhere along the way is incredibly, incredibly difficult. When I learned to make an alien coil, it took me about three months to get it down the first time. And uh, since then, I, I love building them. I love building them. It always feels like an accomplishment when I finish one. <laughs> In addition to the standard alien coil, maybe you're familiar with the Exo alien coil. That was a build demonstration that I performed on my channel. So there are a lot of different ways that someone can make an alien coil or a, a coil that resembles an alien in some way. And that's what's so fun about building in that there's so many different things that you can do and so many different wire combinations that you can use to accomplish those things. And that's what this competition is all about. It's completely open to interpretation. Our 10 builders have only an alien coil to work with. They need to make an alien coil. And from there, they can decide whatever they want to make. While all that is going on, you guys actually have the opportunity to participate as well. 
For example, this week we're focusing on alien coils. Well, we're opening up the Coil Wars page again to another photo light contest. That's right, anyone that has a photo of one of their alien coil builds can go ahead and tag the Coil Wars page in it. We'll go ahead, we'll repost that into the Coil Wars feed, and based upon whichever photo has the most likes, they'll be getting a shout out, a feature alongside our 10 competitors next week. You guys have the opportunity to play along as well, pretty cool. All skill levels are welcome. And just to show you how true that is, here's the alien coil that I threw together for this week. This is a mohawk alien coil. Actually, it's a stitched mohawk alien because one of my subscribers, Taylor Ivy, actually asked if I would demonstrate a stitched alien. So that's what I've gone and done for you guys today. I've put together a quick tutorial for a stitched mohawk alien. So for this build, we're going to need our drill. We're going to be using our goggles, our trusty magnified goggles. We're going to need some pliers. We're going to need some wire cutters, some ceramic tweezers. We're going to need a vise. We're going to need some swivel tools. We're going to need our robot penis. Yes, the, uh, <laughs> the Fisker's hand drill. We're going to whip that out for this build today. And we're going to need some wire. Uh, wire for this build, we're going to be using some 22 gauge, we're going to be using some 36 gauge, we're going to be using some 30 gauge, and we're going to be using some 26 gauge wire. So first things first, what we need to create is a Clapton coil. And we're going to do that with some 22 gauge and some 30 gauge. I take the 22 gauge about two times off the spool, and we're going to Clapton that up with some 30 gauge. Once that Clapton is built, we're going to go ahead and decor that wire and we're going to stitch it with some 36 gauge. Now the way that I like to do that is basically I take the strand of 36 gauge off of the spool just a bit. I basically measure it out against the decored Clapton so that it's, I know it's going to be the right length and then I lock the 36 back onto the spool so it doesn't run away from me. And then I'm just going to feed that 36 gauge wire through the 30 gauge. I'll usually put on the uh, magic uh, magnified goggles for this one just so I can see what I'm doing and I'm feeding it in correctly. Once it's all fed in and notice that I've fed this on through so that the 36 gauge ends up on the end of the 30 gauge D cord Clapton where I unwrapped it from a bit of the 22 gauge that was sticking out of the chuck when I was clapping it on there. The reason for that is I'm going to basically marry those two wires together. That bit of 36 gauge that came out in the far end of the D cord Clapton and the bit of 30 gauge that's left over there. I'm basically just going to twist those together so that they'll hold. And then I'm going to lock those wires together into the vise. I'm basically just going to take a little stroll across the room. I'm going to hold the 30 gauge D cord Clapton with one hand and I'm going to hold the spool of 36 gauge with the other. We're just going to take a little walk across the room. What's happening there is I'm stretching the 30 gauge wire out across the room over the 36 gauge core and it's basically stitching that wire for us. It just makes it very easy to stretch it across that way. What's nice about working with 30 gauge for the Clapton on the Mohawk is that the 30 gauge, it's very, very easy to figure out how far you want to stretch it because when it gets to the point where if you stretch it any more, it's going to lose that shape, it's very, very hard to pull it. It's a lot of resistance and you can just tell that, you know, if you pull it anymore, it's not going anywhere. In fact, I'm pulling it to the point where, you know, the, the uh, vice is starting to move. So when I see the vice starting to move, I know it's not going to stretch very willingly anymore from there. From there, I'll go ahead and I'll cut the wire on the 36 gauge spool. So then I just re-spool it onto this empty spool and when all is said and done, I've got a spool full of 30 gauge D cord Clapton that's been stretched and stitched with 36 gauge. Now I'm ready to work from that. From there, I'll go ahead and I'll take a bit of 26 gauge. These are gonna be our new cores, our triple core of 26. And I'll take it just about uh, two times off the spool and I'll straighten that out. And then I'll take another strand one time around the spool and straighten that out. The reason for that is the way I'm going to organize my three core wires on the swivel tools. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to anchor the smaller strand, this one time around the spool strand onto the swivel tools and just tie it on there. And then the longer strand, the one that went two times around the spool, I'm going to basically drape that over, find the middle on the swivel tools, give it a pull, 
that's the middle, and now I've got three wires all lined up together on my swivel tools. So three strands of wire all evenly sized, clip them all off together. The way I like to bend my wires so that they'll fit into the chuck is to bend the two outer wires. I leave the middle one straight and I bend the two outer ones. It makes it very easy to go ahead and seat it on into the chuck that way. Now, you can do this with a drill. It works just fine if you know what you're doing. Me, I didn't have a whole lot of luck doing this with the drill. I didn't like the way that it came out. I just didn't feel like I had enough control over it. Because the thing about this wire is that the way that it's going to land when it's being aliened is kind of odd. And it's supposed to be because we want to get that mohawk look a little bit later on. You'll see how that happens. It's a little bit of a challenge to control it on the electric drill I found. So I really liked using the hand drill for this. And it made it really easy for me because I was able to go nice and slow and I was able to see that alien taking shape. And I was able to observe the way in which I needed to hold the spool just enough so that it was able to slip through my fingers and the wire could just be guided onto my three core wires. It made it really easy for me using my little robot penis, my Fiskars hand drill. I love that tool. It's so handy. So using that, I was able to get enough wire that I was able to manage a single coil, which was really my goal. All I wanted was a single coil. Now it's not perfect from beginning to end on this strand, but it was just enough for me to get the five wraps that I was going for. What I did was I went ahead and anchored that wire on into the vise, and then just very, very slowly, very carefully, sort of combing the mohawk as I went, I went ahead and I wrapped that coil around a two and a half millimeter bit. And it was awesome watching this coil take shape. There's something about watching a coil that you've spent a bit of time on. You've been, you know, making this wire and failing and having a hard time getting it to come together. And then you wrap it and it finally happens. And you see that it's working. And you see how this coil looks when it's wrapped. And you're like, hey, that's exactly what I was going for. It's an awesome feeling. I know that every builder out there probably feels that way at one point or another. It's just stoked when they see their wire come together. And I was this time because the thing about the Mohawk Alien, something I've always loved about it, is the look from the side. The side view on the Mohawk Alien, it just looks like this seashell kind of shape. And I've always just been enamored with that shape. And... I just think it looks so friggin' cool. The reason that this mohawk is created is because we did that Clapton wrap on the 22 gauge wire. And then we're alien Claptoning onto a wire that's significantly smaller. We used the 22 gauge to wrap this Clapton, and now we're alien Claptoning it onto this 26 gauge. There's a big difference between 22 gauge and 26 gauge wire. And that's why it's able to create this mohawk kind of shape. Looks friggin' cool, gotta say. And then what I decided to do ultimately is take that bit of 22 gauge, make it a staged heating coil. Just wrap it into the spaces between those mohawk wraps. So it ends up being six wraps of 22 gauge and five wraps for the mohawk alien. And I went and mounted all that into the Goon RDA.
Let me tell you, it's one of the most delicious coils that I've ever vaped. I vape it at about 140 watts. It's a low, low build. It ohms out at 0.14 ohms, just a single coil. So, yeah, there's no way I would ever duel that. What it does with this Mohawk is it creates a cavern in between each length of Mohawk wire where it just kind of gets trapped. The juice just kind of gets trapped between those peaks and valleys in there. Not only that, the Mohawk itself has this sort of intricate design to it where the alien Clapton wrap is sort of being spread apart. And it's creating this very intricate looking design where juice gets trapped in there trapped in each one of those little follicles of mohawk alien uh, hair or whatever. I mean, it's just an insanely delicious vape. Fact of the matter is that I'm getting over a cold. I've been sick all week and I'm getting over a cold and I can actually taste juice off of this coil a bit. That's a testament to how amazing this coil is. I haven't been able to taste anything all week. I vape something else, I can barely pick anything up, but I vape on this and it's, I can tell that there's flavor there. I can taste something. That's how good this coil is. That even though I'm sick, I'm getting some flavor. That's amazing. I can't wait to get well again so I can enjoy it more thoroughly, but it's a great, great vape and a lot of fun to build. So there you have it guys, the Mohawk Alien Coil, the stitched Mohawk Alien Coil. The first round of Coil Wars, we're making Alien Coils. The judge is going to be none other than Hazel Jedi, the man that turned me on to building to begin with. This is Coil Wars, we'll see you again soon. Vape on, vapers.